This is Crime Watch Live. Now, our phone lines are open and our call takers are waiting to hear from you. So, let's see if you can help with today's first appeal. The thieves who stole thousands of pounds worth of history. This is Hopwood Hall near Rochdale in Greater Manchester. For more than 500 years, it was the ancestral home of the Hopwood family. But after both heirs to the hall were killed during the First World War, the house fell into disrepair. It was taken over by Rochdale Council, but close to collapse, the chances of a restoration seemed remote. I remember it from the, the 70s. I used to come up here walking in the, the 70s, and I remember the Rose Garden at the front. Bob Wall is the caretaker here. He has years of experience restoring old buildings, but this project is his biggest yet. I work as a historical building worker, so I do repairs to old buildings. I'm involved with Hotwood Hall for over 20 years. The project looks set to take a lifetime of fundraising and restoration. But in 2017, this once stately home found an unlikely new champion from across the Atlantic. So growing up in the US with a name like Hopwood, it's not the best name to have. I was always pretty embarrassed of it. Uh, my grandfather was named Hopwood too, and he always used to talk about a Hopwood castle in England. And I just thought it was a fairy tale or a bedtime story. I never really thought much about it and really interested in genealogy and also interested on the origins of the name. So one night I was uh, doing some surfing online, looking at ancestry sites, and I came across Hopwood Hall. <laughs> so independent filmmaker Hopwood was astonished when his research revealed that thousands of miles away, his ancestral home was still standing. I saw a picture and it just blew my mind. It was love at first sight. So I found an email address that was connected to the hall. By the time that I woke up the next morning, I already had responses from the council and the caretaker and other people saying, when are you coming to England? Hopwood couldn't resist and hopped on a plane. I saw the look on his face as we were walking round. It reminded me of the way I felt when I first started walking around the building. There's still so much beauty in it, even though it was derelict at the time. It was, you know, the fireplaces were still there, the, the wood carvings dating back to the 1400s. I joke with Hotwood, some of the carvings were built before America was discovered. Just felt like, how can I turn my back on this? It really changed my life in a way that I felt like I needed to get involved and help rescue it and, and bring it back before it was lost forever. Caught up in the project, Hopwood left his life in Hollywood and relocated to Middleton to throw his weight behind the restoration effort. It was an amazing move, and I knew it had to be done in order to spearhead the project. And I couldn't have done it without the open arms of the community. His enthusiasm and passion for the project was infectious. Can you guys, can you tell me your names, um, where you're from, and what you're doing here today? Hi, my name's Jimmy. I'm from Middleton area, and I'm here to volunteer to help Hopwood Dupree restore his ancestral home. Soon, he had an army of volunteers from the local community raising funds and working to bring this historic building back to life. Hopwood's story had shone a much-needed spotlight on the plight of the hall. But publicity about the hall's renovations also attracted some unwanted visitors. On the night of the 27th of November last year, two intruders made their way into the grounds. They began ripping up the ancient York flagstones from the garden outside the perimeter fence. They removed dozens of the historic stones, worth thousands of pounds, transporting them in a wheelbarrow before loading them into a van parked nearby.
The theft of the flagstones was a huge blow to the project. To have a thief come in and steal those in the night is really upsetting. And now it's another thing that we have to focus on restoring. Those stones have been in, around the building for three or 400 years. And for them to be, to be taken away is, is like taking someone's memory. And the cost of replacing the stolen flagstones is more than the community group can raise. The community and all the people involved have taken it personal, as if it's a personal attack on their own home. You know, the way that they've put so much time and effort into it. So many people came forward to me uh, in different parts of England saying, our flagstones were stolen too, and it's happening all over, this heritage crime. It's a big deal, and it's really upsetting. It is a slap in the face, and that's why these thieves really should be brought to justice, and this shouldn't happen again, not only to Hopwood Hall, but really to any other heritage sites like this. Yeah, it's just so disappointing. Joining me by video call now is PC Stuart Ockwell from Greater Manchester Police, who's investigating the case. Stuart, good morning. First of all, can you just remind us when and where this took place? Yeah, certainly this has happened at Hotwood Hall, which is just outside Rochdale in the town of Middleton. Uh, it's happened, we believe, on the night of the 27th of November and the 2nd of December of 2020. OK, so you've got some CCTV footage, which we're going to see now. This is from the earlier date, from the 27th of November. Can you just talk us through what we're seeing on screen? Yes, yeah, certainly. This is taken from Hotwood College, which is adjacent to the hall itself. There are two males which arrive in a white Citroen van. They go use some bolt croppers to try to get into uh, the hall grounds itself. They're, they're unsuccessful, so they, they leave in their van. We believe they then head to a, a nearby farm track where they're able to climb over the wall, get into the grounds and subsequently drive off with the stone. Yeah, we can just see them leaving off screen in that CCTV now. So how are you hoping the public can help you today? Uh, twofold, really, Rob. Uh, firstly, we want them, if they can identify the people within that uh, footage, they are two males, aged about 35 to 40, uh, around six foot in height. One's wearing uh, dark clothing uh, with a dark hood or hat. He's got a red jumper underneath. And then the second has got uh, an orange high-vis jacket. The other is, though, that these stones have either been offered for sale to somebody or have been uh, disposed of at um, someone that's handling the items and selling them on again. We want someone that might be able to give us information on that as well. Yeah, we can just see on the CCTV, we've frozen it, because it appears that one of them has actually got the bolt croppers <clears> in his hand as they're running in towards the building. Um, talk me through the van as well. The van, we've got a still of the van here, and it, it appears, we can see the number plate, but you think that might actually be false plates? That's right, yeah. We know the registration number of the van. We've done some work uh, around that with our intelligence systems. It no longer activates those systems, so it's either been destroyed or is now on false plates, that, that registration plate doesn't exist anymore. OK. Um, and it's worth saying that although there was obviously financial value attached to these stones, the sentimental value is absolutely huge and irreplaceable. That's right, yeah. You're talking tens of thousands of pounds to replace them. Um, the volunteers simply don't have that money available to them. But then it's, it goes with the people that have laid those stones uh, go back hundreds of years. So the great-grandparents of people that couldn't live in Middleton, they're the people that they've been stolen from, really. OK. Thank you so much for joining us, Stuart. It really is worth pointing out as well that since this theft occurred, security arrangements have been changed at the hall. So if you can help police find the people responsible, the number to call is 08000 468 999. Remember, it's free from both landlines and mobile phones. That line's going to be open until 12.30pm. And don't forget, you can text us 24 hours a day. That's the number there, 63399. Text the word crime, leave a space, and then write your message. Texts are going to be charged at your standard message rate. Or you can send us an email, and that's the address there. It's cwl at bbc.co.uk.